Hello? Hello, Jeff. Yeah. Look, I've got problems tomorrow. I've got to get the pictures for the academy, and I'm going to need to know with transport. And uh, I was wondering if you could help me with a van. One of three and a half thousand painters who submitted themselves this summer to the ordeal known as the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition. To be accepted and hung here is to be one of the chosen. At the end of March, artists all over the country began moving with hope towards Burlington House. A widow from a small village in Oxfordshire, a draftsman from Taunton in Somerset. There's the wife of the Lord Chancellor from Gray's Inn. outside Buckingham Palace. There's a leather cutter from Bethnal Green in the East End. And there's a youth worker from Stepney. On the way up from Taunton, the draftsman's minibus has broken down twice, but he's finally made it to the academy. No, you can't come here, sir, because I'm the back of Burlington Garden. Very sorry. Yeah, well, you've got to go outside the state, right? You turn left, you've got the top of the secretary there, you turn around the Regent Street, the second traffic light, right? You turn left, quick on the road, you turn left again by the police station, quick the way down, and you turn right and you see the back of this building. Right. Oh, thanks anyway for I'll, the help. I'll try. Right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. After four hours on buses from Oxfordshire, Mrs. Wilson is nearly there. Hey, Steve, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm trying to get to the Royal Academy. I got to the front, and they told me I'm going to go to the right. back. <laughs> yeah, so I remember that, but I can't unload the painting. Huh? Well, can't they let you in here? They've let me in there, and they've thrown me out again. Another way around the outside. He gave me instructions, but <laughs> you'll get as good as mine. There's police no, stations no, and left the and right. Entrance, but it's all one way through. <laughs> you go around there, you come to the back of the, Na of the National Ethnographic Museum, the Museum of Mankind, yeah. and that runs through. You can go directly through. Yeah. Um, the National uh, Museum of Mankind to the uh, National Gallery. Excuse me, don't we the back of the Royal Academy is, do you? Uh, the back of it? Oh, I'm sorry. So I've got to go round there. Now, wait a moment. If you go into Oxford Street, down you bomb street, and along there. So it's simple. You go there, I guess. You can find it, there is a show. <laughs> You're looking for the Royal Academy as well, are you? Well, we passed the damn thing once. Um, as far as the compass is concerned, it's certainly in this direction. At the Admiralty chart making office in Somerset, in a sea of drawing boards, the man with the minibus, Brian Parsons, has labored for 25 years on the small print of the ocean, endlessly replotting the boys and the sandbanks. Inside the draftsman, there's a painter struggling to be free. 2 a.m. The light and the record player in the garden shed where he paints are still on as usual. Brian Parsons paints like other people breathe. He dreams of becoming a professional. If he can get into the academy, that might be a start. He must choose the paintings to enter very carefully. Coat can. I'm positive about that one. Not really sure. Mm. I think the river bank. And the knee. Just for the alteration of the foot, I think mm. that's the one. I prefer it just for that. Well, it's, uh, you can, you've got to take a choice. You've got so mm. much time and mm. so much to paint. Mm. So I'll work on this area in the head. Less, less work needed on that to finish it. Mm. Yeah. To the standard yeah. I'd like to get it than that.
Dan Jones's reason for painting and for submitting his work to the Academy is that he wants to make people think. Well, if you get a picture in there, 50,000 people walk past it, and uh, that's sort of quite a good way of communicating with the public, really. So I've been lucky in the past and got one or two in, the, and uh, some of them being about on quite political subjects, and that, that pleased me very much. That, Taking of a big trade union demonstration, which I did like when the dockers were in Pentonville, but everybody from uh, Lord Feather Downs came and saw that one, and that gave me a great deal of pleasure. Uh, one of the problems with paintings is you do one painting, that's it. Uh, if you write a book, then people do uh, 10,000 editions of your book, 10,000 people read the book. With one picture, unless you've got it in a public building or on a wall somewhere, like in a tube station where everybody walks past it. It's on a private individual's private wall and nobody sees it. So why an exhibition is good for me and why um, reproduction of pictures that are cheap uh, are important is that you can share something with a great deal of a large number of people having a very private personal object. I, mean, I don't like that. I'm not, I'm not painting stuff. Somebody's private art object to store in a bank. Not that mine is that valuable, but that kind of way of thinking about things. The sort of painting I do is like knitting, really. And uh, you just carry on, you know, knit, pearl one plain one. Just once you know what you're going to do, you just work it through, start at the bottom and work up. So it's not like. Um, once you've got the structure right, then you just fill it up. So no matter what's going on, sit down and paint. Pull the children out of the painting. Carry on. That's, I do it at night, mostly. But, Sundays sometimes. But what about the whole business of the easel and the north light and the proper facilities and all that? Well, I, I haven't really worked out how to use easel. They fall down when I... <laughs> Police Constable Ted Chicken keeps the crowd tidy outside the palace and paints immaculate studies of wildlife. He only began painting four years ago, but he's already had work accepted by the Academy and won himself patrons in high places. I had the good fortune for Her Majesty the Queen to see my pictures, or some of my pictures. She saw them, she showed me the Royal Institute of Edinburgh, who asked to see them, and uh, they, in fact, both saw them together. Very pleased to say that they purchased five. This year, his hopes of being shown at the Academy ride on three studies, all executed with great precision a bird of prey, a weasel, and this spotted flycatcher. Like most people who try for the Academy, Mrs. Elsie Wilson, a widow of the parish of Beckley in Oxfordshire, began her painting in amateur art classes. When I first went to art school, they made me draw a face and I, I put just you know round and nose and mouth as I thought and uh, it was terrible I looked at it and I knew it was terrible and um, I came home and I really was cried I waited till I got home and then I had a good cry because I didn't think I'd ever be able to do a face Mrs. Wilson's painting is partly a defense against loneliness. Her husband died two years ago. Mrs. Wilson views life from an innocent, even a naive standpoint. Last year, she saw Paris for the first time. We went round the back streets to get our dinner at night. And I saw these young ladies in the doorway, you know. And I sort of remembered them because they were standing there, you know. There was one in white. Yes, well, she had long boots on. And the other one was very sexy, you know. There are always people in Mrs. Wilson's pictures, and they are never alone. She's also submitting schoolgirls having a picnic, and this one of a Welsh pub. Mrs. Wilson started painting seriously only two years ago, but it's literally changed her life. I feel that I must get out of the house. 
so I go three, three times a week to painting and that takes me out and since I started I find that well I've made friends and there's so much more I find now that it becomes the day is full you know and I come home at night and I can tolerate the house now Taplow Johnson has been finishing his picture and he's late for work. Hello again, I see him. You'll back your ideas up. Right. I'm sorting this pattern out here. Seems yeah. to. Now remember to get the patterns right and everything else yeah. and you'll be okay. You've got about four minutes, to cut. I'll give you a size 44. Okay? I want you to cut 10 44. 10 42. 10 40. And 10 42. Okay. Ten forty thirty eight. Yeah. Taplow's in all kinds of trouble. He's threatened with prison if he can't pay a magistrate's fine, he's homeless and he's in debt. Piecework, cutting suede coats, is one way to make money. Painting could turn out to be another. In two rooms in this East End tenement, he squats with his wife and the baby. Hi, to keep the bailiff from the door, Taplow really needs to sell a picture. He taught himself, and this is the first time he's put paintings into the academy. One, I put in for the simple reason, it was four pounds whether you put one, two or three in. So I put three in, you might as well get your money's worth. If they sold, like in the Royal Academy, the ones that are in the Royal Academy, if they sold, that'd, that'd get me out of debt for a start. That, that'd pay the debts up, that'd start me off on a clean slate, I'm level with everything. Plus if I've got some work for that, from because of the Royal Academy, that'd be nice, and I'd be like that. To uh, be commissioned to do a few paintings, but I'd rather, I'd much rather paint what I want, and then be able to sell them. Almost Home shows his father's flat, Taplow lived there between children's homes, and another of his bids for solvency is African snapshots. Once you get in debt, it's really hard to get out of it, I think, because I've got a home to build here, right? I've got a kid now, and there's Leslie, and she's stuck by me, and I've got to try and make something off, so I... And uh, as soon as you get some money, you've got to go on the debt. So, you know what I mean? I'll get out of it one day, I must, you know, I want to be living like this, but it's very hard to sort of catch up. And then start on a clean slate, if you understand what I mean. Helen Ganley is painting only one type of person at the moment. On the streets of Oxford, she's developing a personal vision that centers entirely on traffic wardens. They were always so terribly formal. They, or they have to be formal. And I had a very strong desire to put them in an informal situation. Um, and I thought of the most extraordinary things that could happen to traffic wardens. And sort of being included in beauty competitions and things. Um, sort of bathing bells produced the painting called Tribute to Basley Barclay. But the, the, the absolutely peak of this particular series is only in my head still in a very small rough sketch which is to paint them on a trampoline because I decided that um, on a trampoline they'd been absolutely out of control. <laughs> okay. By the end of March they're all in London with their hopes of success at the back door of the Royal Academy. 11,000 pictures, all hope and confusion. <laughs> What did you get? They do. He said I wasn't supposed to bring the taxi glass on. Okay, I'll just find that for anyway. Because it's um. Is it black or white? Is it? Okay, I'll find that for you. Thank you. I don't think it's the men. Where they take paintings. Where's that? 
Oh, Where are you tossing around? My goodness, those are my two, dear, and there's my king. Just filled in. It's a lot of stretchy out, but it's more all right. Oh, there you are. There we are, dear. One, two, three. Yeah, I'll just take you out. Okay. Yes. Yeah, can I have your name and address in those two boxes, sir, uh, please? Oh, well, there's only one entry. Uh, though there's only one entry, yeah. Okay. Please. Okay. <laughs> never again, you know. oh. <laughs> Helen Ganley has arrived between two of her traffic wardens. Outside, Brian Parsons has finally found the place and blocked the entrance with his minibus. He'll have to move it. Mrs. Wilson's brought her three pictures, but like a lot of painters, when they first see the competition, she almost wishes she hadn't. You feel confident about them? <laughs> Not at all, I feel awful. <laughs> and Brian Parsons has finally managed to pass the minibus. Excuse me. Um, can I hand them in to you? Yeah, that's right. I've got all the forms and necessary things here. All right. Dan Jones got his football crowd painting finished just in time. He can be more optimistic than some. He's had a lot of work accepted in past years. They say that if you could explain a picture in words, there'd be no need to paint it. But even artists sometimes ask other artists, what does it mean? Washington, where does that come into it? That's a portrait of George Washington. If you look from about 20, 15 or 20 feet back, it's sort of further, it, it gets more photographic the more you step back. And this one is um, my daughter showing her horse. Capriziana. I want to get that. I want to like any because that stem from it's I don't know, it's the first picture I painted which was expressing an emotion. Before that I've always copied it. And I've been dominated by the subject. This is a setting of the sun in Kingsbridge Estuary. But if there was a definite cross in the water because I painted a smaller one first and then I got the message to paint Jesus Christ there. And incidentally, there's a man uh, who sponsored me to the extent of 75 pounds. He's given me a check for 30 to get me to London and back. And I'm staying at Norfolk Court Hotel, uh, Hyde Park. And the bed and breakfast is 350. <laughs> this one actually, I got. Um, it took me about an hour and a half, but, but I got so disappointed with the final product that I um, sort of daubed it with J cloth and poured various thinners and things on it, and um, you know, it sort of turned out like this. And I'm quite well pleased with it, really. It's, um, and it's come out looking rather like snow. Um, but I left it for two weeks, and I really didn't think it was anything that happened. So I hope you're going to take care of it. You know, it's sort of, it's really um, rather precious to me. They're all precious to someone, but what will the selection committee upstairs think? In the first fifting, eight and a half thousand pictures are going to be rejected. In the end, only one out of every eleven, so hopefully submitted, will find a spot on the Academy's wall.
could imagine the selection committee are old people because uh, I read somewhere about the member of the Royal Academy, Royal Academicians, being old and you got to be over sixty or something to get in, you know. No. 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 The president of the academy no. is the architect, Sir Hugh Catton. Mm. No. Shall I escape? No. For a painting to get through, it has to earn three votes. Oh, no. It's only got two, so it isn't, it isn't in. <laughs> Mrs. Wilson's Paris theme gets an X for rejection. Then comes her picnic. Picnic? Two votes for picnic. Any more? No. And then her last hope, the pub theme. Anybody like that? No. Nude? Brian Parsons' nude goes out. Then come his other two. Oh, Pakeskin. Anybody in favor of Pakeskin? Not really. How about the grass coming up? Two down, only the grass to go. Not for those grass. No, no, I, I thought that had gone, so I'm for grass. D means it's made it. Strange though it is, D stands for doubtful, but it means they've got through to the next stage. Sunset, no. Uh, two bridges, neither, neither through. Next comes the first attempt done with a J-cloth in just an hour and a half. That little funny little thing? No? I just <laughs> nude. No. Now comes young Taplow Johnson's first entry. Well, I think that's all right. I'd vote for that. No. Next comes another of Taplow Johnson. How about that? Two through on a first attempt. Good portrait? <laughs> yes, I think. Don't know. Who painted that? A oh, walker. Okay. The first of the traffic wardens. Wow. Would you like that? Any votes down that way? No, it failed. In spite of their humour, none of the traffic wardens have got through. Not bad, is it? <laughs> Quite like that. It's Constable Ted Chicken's bird of prey. All three of the policemen's pictures get through. Uh, one for this so far. Portrait, no. Pony club, no. No, no. Years of work dismissed at a glance. It is cruel, um, but most of us, in fact, are teachers. And we spend a great deal of our time looking at portfolios of students as they arrive in art school and as they leave, trying to examine them. And we get, I suppose you can call it, a fairly quick eye for talent. The rejected works go back downstairs to wait till their owners come and collect them. Dear sir, I would like to mention my dissatisfaction with the rejection of my paintings by the selection committee this year. I do not consider that the standards of painting at the Royal Academy justify this, as the types of painters displayed in the summer exhibitions have been extremely wanting in authentic qualities in recent decades. Dear Sir Hugh, for the fourth year running, I have received a rejection ticket for my picture submitted to the summer show. I cannot tolerate this anymore without making my feelings known. This painting, I felt, was the best I have ever submitted to the Royal Academy, so I cannot submit to this yearly insult of implying that my work is not good enough. Dear sir, I received your card in tears this morning as all three of my pictures were rejected. After spending quite a lot of money on framing and travelling from the north to London, I would very much like to know the reason why my pictures were not acceptable.
If the Academy is an insult to some, to others it can be bread and butter. The Royal Academicians themselves, men like Teddy Wolf R.A., are allowed to have six pictures hung, come what may. Sometimes I fill, sometimes I fill them all, sometimes I don't fill any. This, I suppose, will be about 800. But I, it ought to be very much more. When after all, this is, I'm 79, and this is a picture that I've spent at least 50 years acquiring, if I have any talent, or developing it. And it cost a lot of money to do that, and a lot of suffering and what not. He's an RA, so he can be pretty sure that whatever he paints, they won't reject him. They could, they could turn it down for anything, but they, they couldn't turn it down for me. I just have to be slightly indecent now, because that's the privilege of being an RA or an ARA. And, and I don't think you could find anything well, the people have um, uh, odd about this picture. Well, They've been very, very nice to me. I, uh, it's the nicest club that I've ever belonged to. It's the nicest group of people. It's unbelievably nice. The final hurdle is the hanging. 2,000 pictures have got past the selection board. Soon, fewer than half that number are going to be left. Pairs of academicians are given a room each and a batch of possible pictures to hang in it. They'll only choose the ones they like and those which they think will go well together. I think that's an easy, lovely little row. I mm. really do. Mm. Now, you've got this huge bird thing to do. Um, what, the, the magpie? <coughs> Do you think, John, that this... <coughs> we can really almost take no notice, just make a little line here. Just go. Skip the green. Oh, how about that? What? That spot of green that you have. Well, you know, I, I wish it had it sometimes, <laughs> you know. You can only hope, can't you? Well, it's a maybe, isn't it? I think it's a maybe. We let them sort, sort it all out, and when they've got it on the wall, we all come along and we make criticisms and we uh, perhaps uh, would su make suggestions. Uh, I think too many cooks very often spoil the broth, and so I like to distribute the people, uh, uh, the, the hangers, into various rooms, giving them perhaps two or even one might hang a room, and um, then we all go back and talk about it. Constable Chicken's bird was on and off the wall 20. times. In actual fact, there's an awful lot of owls living in the academy and a lot of cats. And you had to sort of, in the end, find the best owl and the best cat, really. And the both people like owls and cats. Yes, we do. The prejudice <laughs> in favour of the animals, and, and slightly in favour of the artists who do them. Is just the, yes. So you had a pretty strict. It will. The J cloth instant masterpiece is still just in the running, and Brian Parsons' close up of grass has a good chance. It's near to the wall. What about that? What do you feel about that? Oh, I think that the colour of that one actually and the tone. Out. The main reason why Dan Jones' football scene doesn't make it seems to be simply that the shape is wrong for the room. It seems unfair, but in the experience of Jim Fitton, RA, it's nothing to what can happen behind the august facade of the Academy. One year, when I was the chairman of the, of the hanging, and two people I hung was one, it was the first time I hung John Bradley, and the other person I hung was a man called Peter Blake, both now mm. incidental members of the Academy. Mm. But in those days, they were very, very uh, yeah, cooky I mean, characters, yeah, yeah. you see, and I put these on the wall, and when I'd finished the room, at the end of about a week, I went to help in the other room. The following morning when I came round, I found that these three things had been taken down. So I thought that's a bit thick, and three very indifferent paintings mm -hmm. had been put in, in their place. So I searched for the paintings, my original paintings, and couldn't find them. I got some assistance, some four assistants and myself, went through all those stacks, and we found them hidden away in a room miles away, you see. So I put them back. Mm -hmm. This happened three successive mornings. And on the, on the fourth morning, I thought, well, it's silly to go on doing this. So I waited until the last day, until the morning of the takeover, and the Academy Council come around. 
And then I quickly put my appendages back, and I was on the council, and then came around with the proposals in the council, and the room was accepted. But I afterwards, afterwards discovered that it was old money. Who the president, then, the president then, then, then. who had crept around in the dead of night. And he and said, he I'm not he having this. He couldn't bear these paintings. He couldn't bear breakfast. Mm. But he took them down, didn't say anything to anybody, and put his, his friends there. He did it three successive times. <laughs> a fairly astounding piece of news has reached Bethnal Green. Yes, Susan, I've been joining that in the academy. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 One got rejected, eh? Yeah. Um, uh, how long that will be? Yeah. How long is it on? Yeah. May it seems like now, three months. Three yeah. months. So you can sell them there as well. Oh. You can sell them, I'll put price. When the exhibition opens, May. May the first, the eighth, right? Yeah. I'll take you grab it. Bring it, Cab, me, you, Tomby, Miss Janet, Frank. Oh. Everyone I can't there, we'll go up there, see? But I think this ticket makes me get me and Leslie in. No, not paying, right? Everybody else has to pay, but that's all right, isn't it? That's the day. Friday, Monday, I've got to go up there, right? Monday. And that's for artists only. And they give you dinner, you know what I mean? Oh. So I don't need all the other artists. <laughs> The day when Taplo Johnson goes to lunch at the Academy is known as Varnishing Day. Originally, it was the time when painters came to retouch their work before the opening. It's said that Turner used to repaint his pictures entirely if they didn't go with the ones on either side. But nowadays, it's only a few perfectionists who actually do any work on Varnishing Day. This painter is gilding a frame, but he needs static electricity in the brush so that it'll pick up the gold leaf. Can I have some more of your, your electric bar? Now, the static in his hair is running rather low, so he collects some from a rather puzzled passerby. I don't speak and think I'm in use, because, but you know, everybody has a certain amount of electric I help you. Next to arrive for lunch, Brian Parsons. They have varnishing day, which is a great laugh. And um, they have a lunch there, it's a buffet lunch. And some people get the food, and you'll see that, and then some people don't actually get any food at all. And you see them wandering around, trying to understand what's going on and when they should start grabbing. There are a lot of those people that don't belong to any of the cliques. They don't know anybody. They feel embarrassed. Uh, they wander around with a black, permanent black on their faces. Constable Ted Chicken stays on the fringe. Brian Parsons, in a new suit, is finding it hard to get any food. Excuse me, love. Oh, no. Just isn't, isn't me at all, you know. I don't mind taking pictures, but I really, you know, I'd rather not have, you know, all of this to do with it. Why not? It isn't me. <laughs> Taplow's still rather on the outside, but Brian Parsons has been nobbled by a clique of miniaturists. Yes. But miniaturists have been using it since 1700, and it's a shame to think that it's dying out now. Oh, James, my dear. Oh, I know you so well, Mr. Monaghan. <laughs> I didn't know you were dead. I'm not quite sure that I'm still alive. I'm sure that one of my pictures has already filled. Well, I'm not surprised. Uh, which one? Uh, the Lowry funeral. Oh. Two days later, the Academy prepares for the social pinnacle of its year, the dinner which opens a summer exhibition, when prestigious guests will dine amongst the painting. This is Peter Blake, an academician who's something of a bull in the Academy china shop. He's organized a room of work by specially invited painters, and he's brought in top sellers like David Hockney, Alan Jones, and Kitai, who've never shown here before. Blake himself paints nudes like this one that sell for thousands and would startle your grandma. 
By bringing in other painters who already make big money and have their own places to show, he's upset some of the struggling artists for whom the summer exhibition is the only chance to show their work. But the storm blows over and dinner is served. Gloucester wears white tie and the Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order. The President wears something he designed himself. My lord, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence, please, for your president. Uh, your, uh, your Royal Highnesses, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this year's summer exhibition, opening on Saturday, is the latest, and I think, genuinely really one of the best, in an unbroken series that has continued, believe it or not, despite wars and revolutions and national crises of every time since 1768. Now, we're very proud of this continuity. The crumbs have been swept away. It's opening day. I think the summer exhibition is the most important aspect of the Academy. Big exhibitions are really a thing of the past. But the summer exhibition, which embraces everybody in the provinces, everywhere, is a marvellous chance for any completely unknown character to make his name. Because after all, the dealers come, the dealers may condemn the academy because, you know, they make nothing out of it. But uh, they come round and they pick people out. So I think to lose the academy would be, would be a tremendous shame because it's the only solitary exhibition that's absolutely an independent exhibition. takes no commission, 
and is the best gatherer in Europe. Absolutely, undeniably. Yes, and to get on the walls of the academy is not only a very uh, a marvelous thing to do for the, for the painter, but it's the best salesman in Europe. Most of the dealers come in the first couple of hours, but even then they may be too late. <laughs> Where is number 400? Number 400, oh my God. And uh, me? Of you. Uh, it, it's uh, not that chair. It's, it's, it's not that chair. I tell you what is rather nice about mine. They've all been sold before the thing yeah. opened and bought by the porters. Oh, uh, how nice. The red dot means sold. This year, £150,000 worth of pictures were sold at the summer exhibition. Ted chickens were all bought. Yes, I like a fruit. Isn't it funny, this? Really big, he's got... He's got such a small head and such big long legs. I think the Prince Charles is there to, um... I mean, if you come in and you just see the profile... Yes, I'm afraid he's lost over there. Maybe I can see him. He goes like that. That's all, don't you? No. I said it's modelling all the pictures. Yes, I've looked at it. But I haven't finished it. The girl he wasn't long enough. We know very good Bernard Levin art. It's about the best of all in the concert. The artist for 25 years. I couldn't believe it. I didn't bring my big book for half an hour. Half an hour before lunch. I think pictures are uh, very... They're rather like animals. You have to stalk them in, in, in a funny sort of way. You know, that make sure there comes a point. Some, when you, if you get back from here, there comes a sort of point when it suddenly become different. Well, we didn't think anything of the one which was just in the corner there and it seemed to be various shades of pink. Sad to say, neither of Taplow Johnson's pictures do sell. He'll have to find another way to pay his debt. Yeah, I like this one. That's good position, you know. Then that's where they come on the line, see? It's not high, it's not low. It's right in front. Every bit is there. Every bit is there. Every bit. That's good position for that. Yeah, this one. He couldn't understand what it meant at all. He didn't seem. Well, we're fine having him on too. Thank you. Quietly proud, Brian Parsons, the chart maker from Somerset, takes his family to see his first work to be hung at the Academy. Hello. Hello. Come on here, Sean. Do you like that? Yeah. Like that, Phil. One on the horse. Beautiful. There's the sprint stuff drawings over there. You can come up and look at those. Now, this is the miniatures now. Mm -hmm. This is the miniature area. Can you see it? It's got a red spot on it. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I think all the painters must be colour blind. I mean, just look at the colour of this wall, yes. these pictures are hanging on. I mean, I've run screaming after this place. But if he's going to paint his hands for the next it's almost as if he's going to come yes. up with the picture and give you that. I say that that lot of pictures, uh, so-called pictures, look to me as if somebody's taken a 12 ball gun and stood at a bite. 10 or 15 yards and let drive at them. I personally wouldn't give the price of six and eight and stand for any of them. I think it's worse than usual, and I come every year. I like all this. She's all, she's all people around her. The grown ups tend to look anywhere but here, but the children are fascinated. I bet they are like in fact. 
Where Eve would have worn a fig leaf, Peter Blake's nude wears a flower. very disappointed when I heard that the book had been rejected from the Royal Academy. I think I would have been pleased and surprised if they had been accepted. I'd always regarded the Royal Academy exhibition as a bit of a gamble, and I suppose I never really believe in investing a lot of emotion in a gamble. When you don't get your pictures in, you think the pictures aren't good enough and that you've failed when I'm uh, unbearable for several weeks I don't talk to anybody and uh, go into a black gloom and no doubt thousands of other people do the same everyone must be hurt if they tell the truth if they do yes they must be but then there's tomorrow isn't there you start again tomorrow and, and yes I'll do that I'll make something different now <laughs> <laughs> 